friends, welcome to a new happy learning video. Today we are going to meet a very special mammal who is very greedy. The bear! As you can see in the images, the majority of bears have a very big and chubby body, with short legs and a long snout. Like most mammals, its body is covered in hair. A bear's fur can vary a lot in colour. It can go from snow white like a polar bear, to brown like this grizzly bear, or to white and black like these friendly panda bears. Although bears are very heavy and big animals, they are very capable of climbing trees with a lot of agility. However, this is not always the case. They are also very competent swimmers. Bears are omnivorous animals. They eat meat and vegetables, like us humans. However, they are much greedier. The panda bear, for example, spends 12 hours a day eating bamboo. And we all know how much the majority of bears love honey. They use their very developed sense of smell. It's even better than a dog's. There is a very special characteristic that bears have that converts them into a very interesting animal. When the cold arrives in the freezing winter, the majority of bears hibernate. They spend every day sleeping, they don't wake up, they don't eat, they don't drink, and they don't even poop. They live off the fat they accumulated during spring, summer and autumn. That is why they are so greedy, because they have to eat enough during these seasons so that they can sleep all winter. Like all mammals, birds are viviparous, that is to say, they are born from their mother's womb. And the baby bears are also born without hair, teeth and are blind. Bears are hunted for their fur, as coats and carpets can be made from them. And this is why they are in danger of extinction. If we don't take care of them, they can completely disappear from the face of the earth or they would only be able to remain in zoos. An ability the bears have that always catches everyone's attention is that they can stand on their back legs. This can be a very terrifying show, as they can appear huge when they do so. The most common bear is the grizzly bear. They can measure up to approximately 3 meters and weigh about 1,477 pounds. It's a lot, isn't it? Well, now you know a bit more about bears. And even though they are not very lovable, they are super interesting. Bye, friends! Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Mammals The diversity of mammals is amazing. They can be as huge as these whales or as tiny as this cute little balancing mouse. They can be noisy like this howler monkey or quiet like this hedgehog with its sharp pointy spines. Even though they're amazingly diverse, all mammals have a number of common characteristics you should know about so you can recognize and differentiate them. All mammals are viviparous. They are born from their mother's womb. In their early stages of life, they feed on milk, which they get from their mother's breasts, where the mammary glands are. And that's why they're called mammals. 
and when they're little, they're so cute, aren't they? Mammals reproduce by internal fertilization when a sperm cell and an egg join inside a female. As you can see, they have teeth inside their mouths and lips around them so they can eat and suck milk. Most mammals' bodies are covered with hair and all mammals breathe with their lungs even if they live in the sea. Look at these dolphins coming up to the surface for air. The body temperature of mammals doesn't depend on whether it's cold or hot outside because they can maintain their own internal temperature. Almost all mammals are terrestrial, like camels and jaguars. Some live in the sea and are called marine mammals, like these dolphins and these seals. There's even a flying mammal. Bats are the only mammal that flies. Mammals have four limbs, which vary depending on where they live. Land mammals have legs, so they can walk and run when they need to, and jump, and sometimes even climb. Marine mammals have fins so they can swim very fast. And flying mammals have wings so they can fly through the sky. Do you know which is the most wonderful mammal that lives on Earth? Human beings! People are mammals too. How mammals feed. Depending on what they eat, mammals can be classified into different groups. Herbivores only eat plants and their teeth are especially designed for grinding. Horses, sheep and llamas are herbivorous animals. Some very special herbivores are called ruminants. They swallow their food almost without chewing it, and some of it is digested normally, but some of it is stored in their stomach. And when they want to, they regurgitate it into their mouth to digest it again. Cows, giraffes, and goats are ruminants. Carne means skin or meat in Latin, and that's what carnivores eat, the flesh of other animals. Their teeth are large and sharp for hunting and tearing at their food. Carnivores that eat insects and other invertebrates are called insectivores, like these anteaters. Omnivorous mammals feed on both meat and plants. Bears, monkeys and humans are omnivores. We can eat a tasty burger with lettuce and tomato. So, let's remember. Mammals are viviparous, and in the early stages of life, they feed on milk from their mother's breasts. They have lips and breathe with their lungs. Their body temperature does not depend on the environment they're in, and depending on their food sources, they may be herbivores, carnivores, or omnivores. Easy, right? So, goodbye for now, everybody, and don't forget to subscribe to Happy Learning. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Welcome to Happy Learning. Today, we're going to look at vertebrate animals. As you know, we can classify animals in various ways, depending on the characteristics we look at. Today, we're going to look at some animals by the internal structure of their bodies. According to this feature, we can classify them into 
vertebrate animals, which have an internal skeleton, that means bones, and invertebrate animals, like this worm, which has no backbone, in fact, no bones at all. All vertebrate animals have an internal skeleton made up of bones. Bones are very strong and give bodies their shape. They hold it nice and straight. The spine, the backbone, is made up of a series of articulated pieces of bone called the vertebrae, which allow the body to move in a certain way and be flexible. Vertebrate animals' bodies are divided into the head, the torso and the limbs. Yes, the head, the body and the arms and legs. Some vertebrates are aquatic, like these fish. Others are terrestrial, like this bear. And others fly, like this eagle. Vertebrates can move in many different ways. Walking, jumping, crawling, climbing, when they have to, running, but sometimes it's not enough. There are also many vertebrate animals that move by flying, like birds and bats. For example, these eagles, which unfortunately for the fox, are much faster than him. Vertebrates are classified into five groups. Fish, reptiles, amphibians, birds, and mammals, like this big howler monkey. Now, let's remember the most important things we've learned about vertebrate animals. Vertebrate animals can be classified into five groups. Fish, reptiles, amphibians, birds, and mammals. Vertebrates have internal skeletons made of bones. The body of this kind of animal is divided into head, torso and limbs. They move in many ways. Walking, jumping, crawling, flying, climbing and when they need to, running. So, see you in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe to Happy Learning. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Hello, friends. Welcome to a new Happy Learning video. Look around you. How many living things do you think you can count? We are surrounded by millions of living things. Some, like animals and plants, can be seen with a naked eye. And others, like bacteria, only be seen through a microscope. We know that all living things have in common that they are born interact, reproduce, and die. But we can't say that this living thing and that living thing are similar, can we? That's why we have to divide them into five different kingdoms. And today, we're going to get to know each one of them. The Biological Kingdom Group living things according to their common characteristics. There are five of them. The animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, the fungi kingdom, the pneumonera kingdom, and the protectista kingdom. The animal kingdom is the most known. Animals are characterized by the fact that they are multicellular, meaning that they are made up of many cells. They are heterophic, which means that they feed on other living beings, like this chameleon that has just eaten a fly, or this monkey that is eating that tasty banana. <laughs> Another characteristic of the animal kingdom 
is that almost all of its members can move around at will. These birds, for example, fly to a warmer place. Trees, plants, and flowers are part of the plant kingdom. Plants are also multicellular and as they manufacture their own food through the process of photosynthesis, we say that they are autotrophic. Plants, as we all know, cannot move. They are there, planted. <laughs> the fungi kingdom is made up of multicellular and unicellular organisms. The unicellular ones are yeast and the multicellular ones are mushrooms and molds. Mushrooms and molds may look like plants, but they are not. Why? Because they do not make their own food. They are heterotrophic. They feed on decomposing organism. Ugh. And of course, they cannot move. Or have you ever seen a walking mushroom? The Monera Kingdom is the kingdom of bacteria. These living things are unicellular and can only be seen through a microscope. Some are autotrophic, using sunlight to make their own food. And others are heterotrophic, feeding on organic matter from other living things. Some bacteria are dangerous to people, but they are still vital to the planet's ecosystems. And so we come to the Protactista Kingdom. This kingdom groups together living things that cannot be considered animals, plants, fungi, or bacteria. Its best known representatives are the protozoa and algae. Prototisks, living beings can be unicellular or multicellular, autotrophic or heterotrophic. And some can move and some cannot. This protozoan, for example, is two millimeters long. It's tiny. And this algae, 30 meters long. It's gigantic. It's a very, very group of prototists. And now, before we finish, we have to remember that there are five major kingdoms. Animal, plant, fungi, monera, and protectista. I hope you've enjoyed our journey through different kingdoms. I am off to visit my grandmother's kingdom. Goodbye, friends. Until the next video. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel.